In this video, I'm going to be telling you about my experience installing RTX 3070 in this Dell Aurora R7. And please, before you dislike this video and instantly comment things like, that RTX card is going to fry all your parts in that case. Who buys a pre-built system? What a noob. Or maybe you're thinking that installing a graphics card is really easy. Well, this video is purposed for people who have an R7 or an R8 case. And these types of cases are really small and they can be really tricky to get the right RTX 37 series card into the actual case. So for this video, I'm going to talk about the performance and the thermals, particularly for this R7 case. And of course, some gotchas that you have to be wary of prior to buying any RTX 3000 series graphics cards. Before we begin this video, I want to give a shout out to a fellow YouTuber named Will Creatives. I was inspired to make this video when I saw him a year ago install an RTX 2080 into his Dell Aurora R7. I really admired how giddy he was, how excited he was just to install a graphics card. It was quite entertaining when he made remarks like, oh, the card is so thick and I can't believe it actually fits in this case. This thing is super thick. Seeing someone install a better graphics card in the same system that I have was just very motivating for myself to go out and actually upgrade my GPU. Now, Will Creatives has departed from his pre-built Dell machine and has moved on to a new class of custom-built PCs, which in the gaming community is the alpha male of all computing. I was surprised to see all the hateful comments in my previous videos about PC VR on the Quest 2 directed at my pre-built system. It's almost as if my pre-built computer is equivalent to gaming consoles, which is pretty shameful in my opinion. Now, I will admit, the elitist PC Master Race trolls do have some reason as this pre-built Dell Aurora R7 is not optimal in terms of the quality internal parts and thermals. But at the time of purchasing this computer, I compared the prices of a custom-built machine and turns out that the pre-built was cheaper since RAM, GPU, and CPU costs were so much higher in 2018, thanks to the crazy Bitcoin gold rush pandemonium. I also lacked the time and patience to build a pre-built system since I had just recently came back into PC gaming after a long retirement from my early 20s. Yes, I've built custom machines in the past before, and I will definitely do it in my next machine. So with all the hate against my pre-built system put aside, let's talk about my current specs, as you can see here. And the main thing I want you to focus on is that I'm upgrading from a GTX 1070. In this video, I want to tell you whether or not it was worth paying such a hefty premium to upgrade from the 1070. So why exactly am I upgrading? Well, it's mainly to play virtual reality games on my Quest 2. Unfortunately, thanks to the massive resolution bump in the Quest 2, playing VR at 90 frames per second or 90 hertz is extremely GPU intensive. It's essentially trying to play 4K or even 5K, depending on how good you want the resolution to be on the sliding scale. And let's not forget, if you're going to play PC VR on a Quest 2, you're going to have to encode the video. So basically, you're going to be rendering the game and streaming at the same time, which is very intense on your CPU and GPU. We'll talk about the results of the RTX 3070 later in this video. First, let's talk about what exactly to look for prior to buying a graphics card for this particular system. Unfortunately, the 3070 is the biggest and baddest graphics card you can put in. All of the 3080s and 3090s are using a triple fan setup, which is too long to put into the case. You definitely want a double fan setup when picking a 3070, which is a shame since dual fans are not as efficient as triple fans when it comes to overclocking performance, thermals, and noise levels. Now, I know this video is very focused on NVIDIA graphics card. However, if there is an AMD equivalent graphics card of the 3070 or the 3080 series that fits into this type of case, please let me know in the comments down below. And if you do happen to find an RTX 3080 that actually fits in this case, I would be very interested to know. So please let me know in the comments. But based on my research, I have not found anything that would fit in the case above a 3070. Now, it's not just as simple as picking any dual fan setup for your 3070. Since the R7 case is so small, you want to pay close attention to the length and width of the graphics card. And in some cases, you may want to pay close attention to how many PCIe expansion slots this card occupies. Now, in terms of the length, if you don't want to remove the fan that's at the front of the case, I believe 10.7 inches is probably the utter max you want to go in terms of the length of the actual graphics card. Thankfully, most, if not all, dual fan graphics card are usually less than 11 inches, which is perfect for this case. The more difficult dimension requirement is the width. And this is the distance from the PCIe slot to the enclosure of the side panel of your case. In the Dell Aurora R7 case, there's a swinging power supply enclosure, which is really nifty to keep the case in such a form factor, but it also adds a metal bracket that eats up a lot of real estate for the graphics card's width. Some dual fan graphics cards like the Asus 3070 or the Zotac 3070 are so gosh darn tall. It's quite a shame. This peculiar width requirement really reduces the amount of GPUs available to just two brands the rare Founders Edition from NVIDIA, 
and the MSI Ventus 2X series. They measure at a width of 4.4 inches or 4.88 inches respectively. I wouldn't want to risk putting anything over 5 inches, at least if you don't want to tear out the metal bracket with boot force on the power supply. Now the number of slots that this graphics card occupies is not such a big deal, however you do want to keep in mind that the R7 has very few PCI expansion slots and perhaps one day you want to add a USB 3.0 controller, dedicated one, maybe you want a sound card or maybe a, just a more powerful Wi-Fi adapter to play Oculus Quest PC VR wirelessly. In that case I only recommend getting an RTX card that only occupies two slots to future proof your PC. As for the power supply requirement, luckily I got the i7-8700K model which is liquid cooled by default and has an 850 watt power supply, albeit a cheap bronze power supply that is likely the culprit to my moderate coil wind. Anyway, make sure you have at least 650 watts in your power supply or else you might have to upgrade and Will Creatives does a great video on how to upgrade this particular case in terms of your power supply. So the NVIDIA Founders Edition and the MSI 3070 Ventus 2X are the two main cards that will probably be most compatible for this Dell Aurora R7 case, which is quite unfortunate because this really reduces the pool of graphics cards you can choose from, and unfortunately these graphics cards are very hard to find because they're being sculpted at very high prices, which I did become a victim to. I'll talk about that little aspect in a separate video. Like I said before, if you find another 3070 or maybe an even more powerful graphics card that fits in this case, please let me know in the comments down below. I would love to know. And of course, it is very possible in the future that they may release more compatible graphics cards that are smaller to fit in compact cases. Let's talk about installation. Prior to installation, always ground yourself so you don't give electrostatic shock to your delicate computer components. Installation is very simple. All you have to do is pop the case. You have to unscrew with that one screw in the back. Unfortunately, it's not fully toolless. After which you want to swing the power supply fully open so you can expose everything. One interesting thing that you'll notice is that there is a bracket that comes with your default graphics card. And it was a little tricky to get out. You have to un unscrew the two screws and you just kind of wobble it out. Now you might be concerned and asking yourself, do I need this bracket in when I installed my new graphics card? And the answer to that is not really. The purpose of that bracket was to prevent your graphics card from really breaking the entire motherboard, snapping off when your Dell computer was shipped. It's really hard to trust these delivery couriers. Sometimes they throw boxes around and you don't want your graphics card to be completely broken when you receive your graphics card. In this case, you're not gonna be moving your computer very violently. And if you do wanna move your computer card, I do recommend removing the graphics card because it is quite a heavy graphics card. And without any support on the graphics card, I'm a little concerned. To be honest, I kinda of wish they were using screws on the PCI expansion slots. There are no screws, it's kind of held with these ridges and then locked into place with this locking mechanism. Personally, I'm very scared about it, but so far I haven't had any issues as of yet. I've talked to a lot of people online and they said it's not necessary to have this bracket. Now I did try to install a GPU holder, but I had no success with that. Given the way that this case is designed, it was almost impossible to put this on. So I just returned that and I've been fine ever since. If you have an R7 case and a Founders Edition RTX 37 and you were able to use one of these brackets, please let me know in the comments down below how you did it. And while your case is open, you might as well install some other peripherals, such as this SSD drive. For the final step, you're going to want to use the provided 12-pin adapter and connect it to an 8-pin from your power supply. Everyone on the internet despises this 12-pin adapter, but I don't really mind it because I never see it because my case is unfortunately not transparent. I really like the fact that I only need to use one 8-pin power supply, unlike two 8-pins, which would draw a lot of power. And for the final step, turn on the computer without the case and just make sure nothing is broken. So let's talk about the performance, the noise, and the thermals. Here you can see some important performance stats while I put my RTX 3070 on a very demanding game, Half-Life Alex, at full quality, full resolution. You can see that my GPU temperature hovers around 72 Celsius, which is not that bad given that my CPU, the i8700K, is overclocked. Some cons about the card is that I'm already close to maxing out my full 8 gigs of video memory. Personally, I'm concerned about the limitation of 8 gigs of video memory. Given in a couple years, 4K gaming is going to be the new norm, which is going to put a lot of demand on high resolution textures. The first thing I notice is that this is a very quiet graphics card. I'm very impressed with the performance of the thermals, even if it's such a small case. Now the Founders Edition has a very interesting fan design. It uses dual fans, but if you look on the back of the graphics card, there's actually a vent that allows air to flow through. And what I'm very concerned about, particularly for my Dell Aurora R7Ks, is that there isn't sufficient room to circulate the air. And perhaps the fan design is not optimized for this type of case, because it's such a small case, the air moving around there is very confined. Please let me know in the comments what you guys think. So far, I haven't had any issues in terms of the computer being really loud when I'm playing video games. I'm very impressed with how quiet it is overall. 
but maybe in the long term, that person that, that commented earlier in this video, perhaps my PC parts will be fried. And I hope, hopefully that isn't the case, that everything is fine. I've actually seen some case designs where if you were to use this Founders Edition graphics card, you would completely block the rear vent of the graphics card. And that's something that you definitely want to avoid in your case. So just have a look, at least with the R7, there is some circulation happening. Now in terms of coil wine, I'm also very impressed. I believe it's performing better than my GTX 1070, which did have some coil wine. Now I do have a little bit of coil wine, but I do think that's attributed only to my power supply, which is a cheap bronze 850 watt power supply. So what do I think about the performance? Was it worth all this trouble, all this money and effort to get this graphics card? Well, in my honest opinion, I really didn't see that much of a difference upgrading from the GTX 1070 for my specific use cases. What's funny enough is that yes, the graphics fidelity has increased. There's more effects. Shadows look a little more crisper, but when I'm playing games, I'm still not achieving the full 5K 90 frames per second when playing virtual reality. Virtual reality is a true test of these graphics cards. And I really do think that maxing out the quality settings and then having high resolution and trying to achieve 90 frames per second is extremely difficult even with an RTX 3070. Without comparing it directly from a 1070 to a 3070, I feel that the graphics are kind of just a little bit better than what it was before. So I don't know, maybe I have to dial down the graphics to what it looked like on a 1070 and achieve that 90 frames per second. I do want to put a disclaimer that I did overclock my 1070 series card and that yielded great performance in VR. When playing wireless PC VR gaming through virtual desktop on my Quest 2, I did not notice any substantial improvement in latency. I was really hoping that the new generation of the NVIDIA hardware encoder would make a big difference, but it hasn't. Maybe this is a testament to overclocking my GTX 1070 and how good the performance was on playing games on virtual desktop. Overall, I'm a little disappointed, but I'm also very happy with my graphics card and the performance it has given, because obviously by these benchmarks, as you can see here in 3D Mark, there has been double the performance, almost 100% increase, as every benchmark has indicated. And if you look on this website here, where you compare the 1070 versus the 3070, you can literally see the percentage increase, and that's mind-blowing. And I do see that, and I really do enjoy this graphics card, but maybe in the end, maybe it wasn't fully worth it for me. I don't know guys, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments section down below. Have you upgraded from a 1070 to a 3070? Have you upgraded your older graphics card and have you been disappointed or are you actually very happy? And another question I have for you is perhaps I should have got the MSI Dual 2X Ventus card instead of the Founders Edition because that is an overclocked graphics card. And if I had waited just a couple more days instead of buying it off a of scalper, and perhaps that has a better cooler, better thermals such that it has a more sustainable overclock. I'm not sure. Please let me know what you guys think about the Dual Ventus 2X version versus the Founders Edition. I'm curious to know. I will be putting out another video that explains why I had to buy the Founder Edition from a scalper because I live in Canada and for other reasons. I know that buying a graphics card from a scalper is just as bad as scalping the graphics card itself, but please be patient with me. I'll explain it in my separate video. So stay subscribed to the channel if you want to see that. And thanks for watching it. I'll see you in the next video.